How's it going folks? Welcome to the video. The background noise brought to you by It's Late, I'm Tired, and I've had a toothache for four days. Kinda just want to die at this point. Yeah. But let's, let's try to not go there and get into the topic of today's video anyway. So it's Thanksgiving, or rather it will have been Thanksgiving by the time this goes up tomorrow morning at some point. Um, and I wanted to talk about, you know, goodwill, acts of goodwill, and, and spreading that general feeling. Because this is a time of year when, you know, it, stresses can be heightened because families are all coming together and whatnot. And it's good to focus on the happier things in life. And indeed, you know, humanity's highlights and our personal highlights when it comes to helping out our fellow man. The topic that I really wanted this to be at first was, like, what is the greatest act of kindness you have ever witnessed personally? Um, and I found myself racking my brains for quite a long time trying to think about it, and I don't think I've ever really witnessed anything super remarkably kind in my life. I've seen tons of videos of awesome kind people doing the greatest things ever, sure, but I don't think I've ever seen anybody really personally go out of their way to help somebody, barring maybe the one time I saw like an old lady fall over in the street and a couple of people, including myself, went over to like help her uh, get up and make sure she was okay and everything. And while I do want to talk about one or two instances uh, during my life where I was kind or I feel like I did kind things, I more want to talk about why we don't do as many kind things because when I was thinking about the kinder things I've ever done in my life, I found a theme of awkwardness and uncomfortableness cropping up in my stories. So I wanted to tell you like two really quick stories about a time when I guess I helped some people and maybe I was kind and the undercurrent of me being uncomfortable and maybe why it's one of the reasons we don't do so many things for other people. So the first story happened about like two years ago, maybe three years ago. I was in Dublin, I was in a shopping centre and I had just been to the bathroom and I was leaving down like a long corridor to join the rest of the uh, you know, the shopping areas and whatnot. And I bumped into um, this this old lady who had um, who had hurt herself. So it was a long corridor, I was at one end leaving the bathrooms and she was at the other end walking towards the bathrooms. And I looked at her from a little bit far, far, far away and she was quite clearly um, not all there. She was quite clearly in a bit of trouble. Um, so. You know, I looked at her from far away, like I'm saying, and um, at first I thought, she's drunk. She's had a bit too many to drink, that's a bit odd, you know, it's very early in the day, but at the same time, you know, who knows what her story is. There could be a very good reason why she's the way she is, and what that, no judgement is what I mean. And um, as I got closer, it became apparent that actually she'd hurt herself. So, I got closer to her and eventually she started talking to me. She said, can you help me to the bathroom, please? I've had a bad fall. Now, when I got closer to her, I could see that her makeup had been really badly done by herself, you know, very, very patchy, blotchy, runny, all that sort of stuff. And she was kind of swaying a little bit and she was clearly very disoriented. And my first thought was, okay, yes, gotta help this person, she can barely stand. My second thought was, I can't go to the women's bathroom. And then she grabbed my arm and I was kind of like, okay. I can't forcibly remove this person from my arm, she's quite clearly sick and needs help, but I don't feel equipped to help her, I feel so useless in this situation, I really seized up, you know? So I walked her as far as the bathroom door, and the whole way I was thinking, okay, just keep her upright, keep her steady, don't let her fall, but also, I can't go in there, it's the women's room, I'm a man, I just can't go in there. Years of conditioning has taught me that's a forbidden space, you should never go in there, I suppose, as her carer essentially in that moment I should have just thought she needs help let's get over this and I would have gone in there with her but instead I was thinking I, I can't do this I can't do it I can't do it I got as far as the door and mercifully I suppose at the time a woman came who was like the bathroom attendant and she said okay it's okay I'll, I'll handle it from here thank you you can go now um, and I, I did just that I, I kind of just left um, and that was that was that Second story happened only about a year ago around Christmas time. I was at a pottery shop. I went there with my girlfriend, my, my ex-girlfriend. Oh, my girlfriend doesn't see this. She gets so angry when I say my girlfriend instead of my ex-girlfriend. And my mum and our dog. And so we were at the pottery shop. We all got out of the car. We were going to leave the dog in the car for like 10 minutes. It wasn't hot, obviously, it's Ireland. And then um, 
got as far as the pottery shop door and the dog started crying and I was just kind of like, okay, I'm just going to stay with the dog because I don't want to go in there anyway. You guys just hang out for 10 minutes together and it'll be fine. I took the dog out of the car just to keep him occupied to burn some energy and stuff like that. And I was walking up and down the car park. Um, so I was there for about two minutes and I heard a voice calling me. I turned around and it was an old man who had come out of his house. And he called me and he was like, hey, sir, can you come over here, please? And he kind of beckoned me to come over. And I, I did. I, I walked over to him and I said, are you okay, sir? He said, I've been to the bathroom, but now I can't put my trousers back on. And I said, oh. And he showed me, like, he had, like, dungarees, you know, the strap-on trousers that come, like, over the top, and you, you like, clip your pants to, like, straps, suspenders. And then he was like, I use these to keep them up, um, but my hands are really sore. He obviously had arthritis in his hands, and he couldn't, he couldn't reattach the suspenders to his hands. And he was kind of like, can you please help me? And I, I felt so bad for him. He was clearly very frail, and he was obviously alone. And it, it was the holiday season, like, why not just help him? But at the same time, again, I just seized up inside and felt so very useless and uncomfortable. I, I had the dog in one hand, and this dog is a very skittish dog, um, border collie, you know, cut a loud fart and he runs through the hills, he's very jumpy, doesn't like people, so I, I kind of have to like tie him to like the fence near the house and sort of like hold on to him with one hand, like my foot, while sort of like clipping this guy's suspender to the bottom of his trousers. And obviously this is a very strange experience. Here I am with this stranger that I've just met and I'm essentially helping him put his trousers on, but he's an old guy, he needs help and he's alone. So I just did it. And that's that story. That's the time I helped an old guy put his pants on. Just because. I, I, I was there, you know. That kind of thing really only happens to me. Um, that, that story may well appear in like a, a, another Awkward Moments, Top Few Awkward Moments video, but not at anyone's expense. He seemed like a really nice old guy, just vulnerable, frail, and alone, as so many people are, especially over the holiday season. Now, as I've said before, the uniting theme of these stories is that I felt very uncomfortable. I felt, you know, hesitant, tentative to jump in and help when these people they're just vulnerable people. Yes, they're asking you for like very, you know, like intimate, involved help and whatnot, but it's be just because they're vulnerable. It's because nobody else is there and they need it desperately. And yet, there I was, feeling like a spare tire, feeling so useless and seized up and unable to, to, to really help in the way that I probably wanted to, like retrospectively. Like later on, I was like, I could have done so much more for that person. But I just couldn't in that moment, and I was so very uncomfortable. And I guess it's the reason that we we don't help when we really could or should help in lots of situations, because we just feel so uncomfortable. One, like we're we're often required to invade someone's personal space, get up very close with somebody, and we have to help them. We don't know where they've been. Maybe they're they're very disheveled. Very, they're very kind of wild looking or something like that. And that's hard for us, obviously, it's hard for us. Our own personal space is kind of being compromised there too at the same time. But those are just things that we have to get over and dispense with when we help people, you know? It's kind of a, I think like a, almost a superpower that you have to develop. I can tell another little quick story about that. When I was visiting my granddad in the hospital towards the end of his life, I remember I was in the hospital, in that ward with him, and there were so many other old men just by themselves, sitting, desperate for some company. And I remember I was leaving this one time, and this old guy shouted to me, and he was like, hey, come over here, David. And like, he obviously thought I was somebody called David, but I'm not. And he was like, hey, how's your arm? I heard you broke your arm. And I was kind of like, uh, uh, what do I do here? Unfortunately, a nurse rescued me and just started talking to him and distracted him so I could leave. I was so very uncomfortable in that moment. And in retrospect, I felt horrible because I should be able to talk to these people, to reach out to them and do more for them. But it's, it's so much of a compromise of like, you know, personal space and, you know, comfort and stuff like that that is just so very hard to do. Really what it takes is you for just a few moments to just say, okay, this situation is 
different, it's maybe a little bit bizarre or strange or uncomfortable, but I have to take these feelings, put them on a shelf, and help this human being in their time of need. I can't say how little I want this video to be me tooting my own horn and saying, hey guys, look what a great person I am, but it's so very true. It's, it's difficult to, to do that, especially I think in, in like this age where, where we're so very exposed and there, there are constant cameras everywhere and stuff like that. We feel very like watched and very surveyed and like, we feel like we're constantly being judged for our actions. That when we end up in a situation where you know we have to go every way to help somebody, we can't shake the feeling that we're under some kind of spotlight and we're being, we're being appraised for our ability to help or our, our self-confidence is being is being judged and whatnot, and th there are reasons for this. There's a there's like a concept called the abject, which I'm going to butcher, but it's like when you see something that reminds you of yourself in like a low moment, and you get this like stab of fear inside yourself because you recognize yourself in the thing that is happening. Say if you see somebody getting sick in public and you look at them, it makes you feel uncomfortable because you look at them and you recognize that could be you. So we see people who are in dire need of help and it, it hurts us inside on a, on, a, on a certain level because we recognize how vulnerable we are too and we don't want to, by relation or association with that other person, become like them or be reminded of the fact that we could one day be very like them and be also, you know, disheveled, disorientated, desperate for help and in need of somebody to reach out to us. As I'm trying to draw this to a point, I want to reiterate something my granddad said to me in an earlier video where I talked about something my granddad taught me, and it's this. My granddad always used to say, as once for you, so am I, as you are now, so shall I be. No, no that's not it. As you are now, so once was I. As I am now, so will you be. Oftentimes we feel, you know, kind of like an island. Like we don't need help, that we're kind of invincible and stuff like that. We forget to connect to our fellow man. We forget to connect with other people and recognize the fact that we're always part of a community. There will always be somebody who needs help. And there will always come a time when you need help. As such, we should never ever forget the fact that we should always try to reach out to one another, to help one another, and to do the best we can for one another. Because ultimately, one day, that person you see down the end of a long corridor, staggering after hurting themselves very badly, or that old man whose pants are falling down and he can't do them himself because his hands are too sore, and he's all alone, could be you, and you need that other person you see to help you. And so, so we should just get used to the idea of reaching out to one another and helping each other because at the end of the day, that's all we'll ever really have. Guys, that's the video. I hope you had a reasonably good time. Hope you thought some thoughts. If you wanna to add to the discussion, please comment down below. Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram are all doomtastic, like this YouTube channel. Uh, you can find me there if you wish to do so, and send me a message if you want. Uh, other than that, that's, that's it. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving and whatnot. Take care.